Thank you, Belmas, for inviting me, and uh, to Pat and Alison and, and others. Um, I hope, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is close to your heart, because uh, I hope what I'm going to say is of some interest and relevance to your conference today. Um, it's not specifically about leadership and management, but there are a lot of implications for the leadership and management of doctoral work in universities, uh, in what I'm going to say, um, I hope. So um, uh, I, I really hope there's, there's some relevance there for you. Uh, my title is, is up there, New Forms of the Doctorate, the Influence of Multimodality and Digitization on the Nature and Format of Theses. Um, this was the title of an ESRC uh, seminar series that took place over the last uh, couple of years. So much of the work arises from thinking on that series. But as we, we went through the series, um, what emerged was that in education and the social sciences, and I'm sure it's true in the field of leadership and management too, um, we learned a great deal uh, in the course of the series from practices in the arts and in arts-based doctoral work, which has been going on for, for many years. So some of the examples I'll be giving uh, come, come from that. So uh, broadly, I'm going to cover these things. Uh, I'm going to focus principally on doctoral research, although what I'm saying may have implications for master's level research in this field as well, or even undergraduate uh, final dissertations. I'm going to start with a couple of brief definitions, look at some of the problems and how we've become interested in this field, particularly at methodological challenges. That's going to uh, form the middle part of my talk. A few examples. Then I'll come on to, if you like, what's at the other end of the process, which is data storage, archiving, dissemination of knowledge uh, generated in doctoral work. And then finish with a reflection on implications for students, supervisors, and examiners uh, in this field. So broadly, again, trying to look to build and sustain a community of researchers um, in this area. But let me start with a couple of uh, very brief definitions. Uh, the two, if you like, uh, sort of technical words in my, in my title. Multimodality uh, is a form system of communication like uh, like, for example, verbal language. That's one mode uh, of communication. It can take written and spoken form. That's the principal mode we use in doctoral work and in the generation, exploration of knowledge and in the presentation of it. But there's also still image, moving image, gesture, uh, physical movement, and other modes of communication, which you would recognize simply by uh, looking around you today. I mean, you're not just getting uh, information coming to you in one mode, printed words. You're getting uh, a small degree of gesture. Uh, you're getting a speech. Um, you're also getting a sort of dynamic about the arrangement of the room. So there's a sort of physicality to it as well. So multimodality basically acknowledges that most communication uh, uses more than one mode. Even if you take uh, a page of print, a printed verbal language, there's more than one mode operating in that, in that instantly it is a visual uh, uh, mode of communication. The white space on a page, the organization of paragraphs, you can tell a lot about language just by looking at it from 50 yards distance, even if you can't read it. So modes are there in um, different, well, in, in most everyday communication, actually. Multimodality, just to distinguish it, is not the same as what a lot of people talk of as multimedia, which refer to the hardware, if you like, via which communication is made, television, screens, books, film, and so on. So modes and media are different. And digitization, well, you know, I, I almost felt, do I need to say what this is? I think the key function, the key importance as far as our topic today is concerned is that uh, digital information can be transported easily electronically uh, and can uh, operate, what I mean by that is be transformed, be, uh, to use a technical term, transduced or transducted from one mode to another much more easily than was the case pre-digitization uh, in a range of media. So that's what I mean by digitization. So let's, let's focus on the, the doctoral thesis and on doctoral research. Um, 
the reason I became interested in this was, was largely from my own doctoral students who were pushing at the boundaries of uh, the um, format they were, were required to submit their theses in. And when students begin to say, do I have to submit two hardbound copies for examination? You know, can I not, because I'm working in a sort of web-based field, could I not instead submit a website? Uh, then it begins to raise the questions uh, that have implications for the administration of doctorates and other dissertations in institutions. Uh, it has implications for supervisors and, of course, for the students' uh, own work. And it's very important that those issues are dealt with early on because a lot of work can go on uh, down one or two sets of modes, if you like, and various conventions that later or towards the end, the student might feel, actually, this doesn't feel right for what I want to say. So it is an important issue. Um, and um, I really, I think, can concretize this by just giving some examples of, act, of my own students' work and the sort of problems they're grappling with. So one uh, student, um, and this is the student who has made me think about the nature and format of the thesis, perhaps more um, than anyone. Uh, she's doing a study on complexity theory and the design of learning software. And she has, you know, right from the start, challenged the, the idea of how this is going to look in its, in its final version. How can she possibly present it and do justice to, uh, to the work she's going to create? Um, another student who is actually registered at New York University but does her empirical work in London is studying Filipino youth in Hounslow and their web-based <coughs> musical compositions. So because these are, as it were, live, electronic, web-based works, it's very hard to capture them in the conventional thesis. Uh, and another student uh, who's here, here today, uh, I, I won't embarrass her, her by mentioning her, but uh, she's studying online and asynchronous second language learning of English um, in Korea. So although she's working in the conventional format, uh, she need, she's having to face issues, again, of how to capture the work that she's interested in. Um, and I'll, I'll say more about that methodologically in a, in a minute. So new questions, new fields are, if you like, asking questions of the conventional way we do research and the conventional way it's examined and presented. And further problems, I think, are that you can get frustrated as a student or as a researcher in working out the methodology and methods for researching um, the field. Um, the formats of presentation I've mentioned, two copies of printed softbound and hardbound theses, and in most universities at present, the addition of a digital version or PDF uh, of, of the work. But these formats may not be suitable for different kinds of material, as I've said, which are web-based in digital format uh, or some other, sh some other form or shape. Uh, but the key question you quickly come up against, and it's a really interesting question, I don't know if I have the answer to it, it's one we might want to talk about later, is this one I put at the bottom. To what degree can visual and oral or sound modes carry the burden of argumentation in a thesis? The criteria for examining theses or for uh, creating theses aren't really changing much. Uh, originality, uh, argumentation, coherence, scholarship, uh, and so on. But um, to what degree can the visual and oral modes carry the, that burden? Does a thesis have to contain words? Now, I, I, when I mentioned to a, a particular um, professor from a German university in the social sciences and humanities that I was thinking about theses without words, he said, that's impossible. You can't possibly be doing that. Uh, I'm not promoting theses without words, by the way. What I'm, I'm just projecting what would happen if someone said, uh, they were researching, let's take an example from the arts, uh, mime, uh, and had presented their work in terms of performance or films of performance. There, there are no words um, attached there. Could you imagine a thesis that was only in those modes and did not carry words with words? Well, he, he certainly couldn't imagine them. Um, 